Hello and welcome to our 3D at Purdue's kind of general CAD overview. So at this point, after kind of our redesign and geometry stuff from yesterday, we have officially manufactured our plates and we're beginning to assemble our final robot. So just as a quick kind of overview, we're going to walk you through and then uh, all this CAD is of course accessible and all that, aside from one little piece we'll talk about a little later. So this is just kind of a general side view of our robot. Um, just kind of rough uh, markings for our bumper. The origin is the ground, of course, our, uh, where our swerve modules sit to make sure we clear those if we were to try and intake or anything over them. And then, of course, our intake would be over here. We have our uh, index system and then our shooting mechanism. Now, uh, let's see. Hey, there's a rough mock-up of our intake with, you know, reaching out to grab the ball. Okay. So um, the intake is very similar to the prototype that we did yesterday. The big thing was just getting it at the same spacing with a little bit of a four bar to condense it as much as possible and then flip over the intake. Um, we are primarily going to be using the same compliant wheels, maybe throwing in a four, uh, few four inch mechanism wheels we had and just intaking the ball, uh, kind of your normal intake. We are still kind of debating, but I think we're leaning towards where our uh, motor is. We're going to make that a second uh, set of wheels for the sake of just giving it a little more oomph uh, to get over the bumper quicker. Now, going into the middle, our hopper is this general space. Now, if you'll notice, there's of course not a direct measurement because that part's easy. It just, it fits. I mean, the, we were kind of unsure of how exactly we needed to define it and how we need to maximize space. And then especially after we watched pizza boxes make a hopper, really, anything works. So we wanted to make the other things as small as possible while still reaching our goals. And then the kind of negative space left over is what becomes our hopper. So uh, as of course the intake kind of picks up, it would move the ball up over our bumpers, up clear over the uh, square module. And then over here where there is a set of two inch, I want to say, yes, compliant wheels, uh, clear over and just kind of chill in the center of our robot where there's a bunch of polycarb panels and stuff to kind of allow it to uh, fill up and fit, uh, how many? Uh, roughly, we took a kind of quick estimate of trying to make uh, a simple array and fill up the robot. We think we're in the ballpark of about 25 to probably 28 at most, but we're curious to see what happens. Then of course, once we run our uh, conveyor to start to load into what we're calling our indexer, it takes them into here. Now, I'm gonna actually pull up this plate because I'm a little bit more familiar with it. The general gist is we have uh, three motors to power all of this mess. So first of all, we have our, uh, our same two flywheels. Uh, we switched to X60s, both due to our uh, kind of the motor limits we had, as well as uh, to maybe help keep the heat a little bit lower to avoid overheating or thermal throttling throughout the match. But it is the same two to one uh, ratio for the shooter that we had before. Then down here, we have one of our X60s powering our indexer. I'm gonna grab different sketch. We got a lot of these. I'm sorry. Uh, not that one. Hey, there he goes. Okay. So right here we have our X60, of course, that we're mounting towards the edge of the frame. Um, with where this goes, the idea is it belts down to here. This then belts up to the uh, up to the second wheel or up to a, a gear, I guess, as I believe what this one is. That gear is to then flip the direction for uh, the other two flywheels. Sorry, yes. We belt up from uh, this wheel to this wheel. Uh, those pulleys then, uh, of course, power and pull the ball up this way. Then there is a one-to-one -one gear ratio with, I believe, 30 tooth gears, but I could be wrong, to then belt across and then power these two other um, indexer wheels. So the idea of this is that then the ball will go and kind of pop up and just kind of work its way up and then out the top. Uh, we did run this with a few drills on some wooden prototypes just to make sure this is the final geometry before we machine them out of a, uh, eighth inch aluminum. And we were worried because there's a few potential areas for dead zones and Honestly, just due to the speed and the kind of compliance of the ball, we just flew it straight through. There was no real problem like we thought. So if you'll notice, a lot of the places were just as long as the distance between the wheels was less than the 5.9 inches or so we were using for the fuel, we, uh, we just focused on getting our belt lengths at a reasonable level. Um, 
Most of these are on a one to one. There is, I believe, an initial gear ratio of about two to one. But if you would like to know any of the specific belts or pulleys, I'm just gonna leave all these up here for a second. So up here you have those for the conveyor. These are the ones that are going on the intake. And then lastly, you have these that are going on the shooter and indexer, which is what we are calling this big plate. Um, so going into kind of the more complete robot assembly, uh, we have our shooters, space. There's a few little quirks that we've kind of fixed uh, in real life that are not yet fixed in CAD. We are using these two side rails, which are uh, kind of defining the edges of our indexer system. So these are, I believe, 11 and a half inches apart, edge to edge. Sorry, 11 inches parallel. Um, so that means our shooter is, of course, about 11 inches wide. That, in our testing and with a little bit of compression and whatnot, should let two fuel sit side by side. We haven't managed to shoot them quite yet that way, so we're thinking it might be a little bit more sensitive than that, and we do want to let them uh, go one after another, but we wanted to have the option to shoot two fuel wide with a tiny bit of compression, but we have plenty of space in the robot to allow us to space out and just uh, stack two by one here to offset this plate. Then, of course, we have all of our motors on one side just to kind of simplify our uh, wiring. And then we have our two shooter, whoop, two shooter motors up here. Those are those two X60s on the two to one. We have our indexer motor, which I believe is going to be on a three to one. And then we have our conveyor motor down there, which is on a, about a three to one as well. Here is that other plate for our conveyor, which then of course belts down. Now you'll notice there is a very slight angle to this over the course of the robot. So that hopefully gives us a little bit of downwards pressure as we go to shoot, is since this wants to pull it in and that wheel wants to spin and pull them in, that will help. But as well as um, just the natural, the balls are fairly dense, that they will kind of flow that way a little bit to help us out rather than trying to go purely uh, up through the indexer off the bat. Here is of course our intake, which if we go and if the CAD will work with me, all right, mechanically it works, but we probably have some constraints somewhere from some quick testing we were doing earlier. Uh, folds inside and kind of takes up this nice space in the intake, but otherwise it sits down here. Big four inch wheels out there and ball comes up over. This is where we are powering, but we actually made an adapter. We're going to probably put a three to one gearbox here uh, and then run a second set of wheels here just to give us a little bit more speed up and into the mechanism. But I believe that is still slightly in the works. Uh, it doesn't take much, Im uh, it didn't really make any geometry adjustments, so it's more of an if uh, implementation would help us intake a little quicker. Then of course, balls, you know, or the fuel will kind of pile up in here, and then out through this, through a very steep shooter. Now if I were to give a recommendation, I would flip this shooter to shoot the other way. We wish we'd cut it sooner to kind of adjust for it, but we didn't. Um, this goes, I, I believe we have about an inch short of the, uh, the trench to make sure we completely clear it under. But even with a team shooting over, or even if a team is the 30 inches and plans to go over the bump, it is very hard to defend against a shooter this tall and this uh, shallow of a shot because you just kind of arc over him. Um, it's kind of similar to how in our minds how it played in 2022, where especially if teams put their shooters up high, it was very, very hard to block their shots because if their shooter is at the theoretical max height, it is very, very hard to block them which is uh, the same way of how we saw in 24. It was very, very easy to block a lot of shots because everybody wanted to shoot so low to get up into the angle of the speaker. And then lastly, we have this cube over here. Now, uh, we want to keep a surprise for the reveal, but the gist is, is it is a climbing mechanism of some kind to get the 15 point L1 climb or low climb in auto, and then the four, uh, 30 point, sorry, 30 point uh, high climb at end game. Ballpark numbers based off some calculations and some, and some gear ratios is that our level three climb should take roughly nine to 10 seconds, which means you can still play a lot of end game, finish your cycles, and then just race back for a climb at the very end. Um, the one thing that did make an interesting quirk is it does have one motor that has to get to a kind of strenuous position. So originally we planned on running two CAN buses for the sake of uh, things leaving the frame perimeter, stuff like that, just to make sure, you know, even if something were to get hit, you can keep the important uh, facilities. But because everything stayed in our CAN bus, or stayed in our frame, because as you can see, the only motor that ever really leaves this nice little cozy box we have for it is this one uh, X44 on the intake. 
we've actually elected to run all of our motors on that one CAN bus. And then for the one motor that has to do a more strenuous reach, we will run that off of the uh, Robo Rio CAN bus rather than the Canivore CAN. Uh, so that way, if it does happen to disconnect, all we lose is the magical motor that helps us get our level three climb. Uh, for that reason, we have elected to stop calling that our second CAN bus and start calling it our CAN car because buses carry many things and that CAN bus carries one. But that is the general overview of our robot. Um, just giving a quick overview. Fairly wide, large intake to pull uh, fuel quickly over our bumper. A uh, big center hopper that is just polycarp plates to kind of push us against frame perimeter and store as much fuel as possible. A very small conveyor type system on the bottom that has a little bit of an angle to push them into our indexer. An indexer system that will feed up and then into our shooter. Uh, in terms of sensors, we are relying on most, mostly on uh, relative sensors. The only two we have debated otherwise is putting a three bore encoder on this to allow our pivot to be a little more consistent. And we are likely going to put a brake beam up here so we can preload as many fuel as we can into our uh, indexer so we have more space in our hopper, right? Because if we put four fuel in our indexer, we can put four more in the hopper. Um, and then putting a brake beam so that way we aren't accidentally putting any, f uh, we aren't actually just pumping fuel out of the top or having them touch our flywheels because those are likely going to be dead shots. And then lastly, the mystery mouse tool that will hopefully let us hit our high climb. And all of this will of course be revealed tomorrow. Um, our goal is to post kind of final pictures, stuff like that uh, at the end of this evening and then go a little bit quiet until we would do our final reveal. Um, Ideally, we're going to post a screenshot right at about the noon time, so that way we can show we are done at this point, and then we'll do our reveal video and get all that footage and stuff and release it later tomorrow evening. But that's our general overview. So if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask. We're happy to answer. But uh, otherwise, we're excited.